Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be solving lab number 13 titled Blind SQL Injection with Time Delays. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the Academy, I'm going to click on Academy. Scroll down, select the learning path, scroll down, select SQL injection, select blind SQL injection, and then select blind SQL injection with time delays. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a blind SQL injection vulnerability. The application uses a tracking cookie for analytics and performs a SQL query containing the value of the submitted cookie. Okay, so the vulnerable parameter over here is the tracking cookie. Okay, so the results of the SQL query are not returned and the application does not respond any differently based on whether the query returns any rows or causes an error. Because the results of the SQL query are not returned, that means we can't use a union-based SQL injection. And because the application does not respond any differently based on whether the query returns any rows or causes an error, we can't use any of the blind SQL injection techniques that we've used in previous labs. Next, the exercise says, however, since the query is executed synchronously, it is possible to trigger conditional time delays to infer information. To solve the lab, exploit the SQL injection vulnerability to cause a 10 second delay. Okay, so we could use time-based SQL injection in order to exploit the SQL injection vulnerability. So we've got one end goal over here. And the end goal is to prove that the field is vulnerable to blind based SQL injection and it's time based. All right, let's access the lab. And this might take some time. So we'll create our analysis section. We'll also open up burp. Hit OK. Close that, select Next, Start Burp. And we'll put that over here and make that a little bit smaller. And then we'll set Falxy Proxy to send requests to Burp. So now when we hit Home, it should be intercepted by Burp, which we can see over here. So let's send that to repeater and turn intercept to off and go back to repeater and move that over here. Okay, so our vulnerable parameter is the tracking ID over here. So we need to inject SQL code that causes a 10 second delay. And if we're able to cause that 10 second delay, that means this is vulnerable to a time-based blind SQL injection. Now to do that, we're going to go back to the exercise and look at the hints section. Open up the cheat sheet and go down to the time-based queries. So over here, time delays. You can cause a time delay in the database when the query is processed. The following will cause an unconditional time delay of 10 seconds. So the reason we're looking at the cheat sheet is because we don't know which database we're dealing with. So what we're going to do is we're going to fuzz the application with all the different payloads and see which one it responds to. And then depending on the one it responds to, that means we're dealing with that database. So let's start off with the end by first trying out a MySQL database. So we'll put that over here. Now, in order to properly exploit this, we can't simply add this to the tracking ID. Instead, we'll have to add a single quote, which closes the single quote that this string was in. And then we'll add the concatenate clause to concatenate this query over here. And we'll add curly braces. 
to the query. So let's see if this works. Control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we immediately get the response. So it definitely didn't sleep 10 seconds because even when we don't put that, you'll see that the time it took. So I moved a little bit too much. So control U to URL encode it. Let's just test this again. Here we go. So it takes 136 milliseconds. And then when we remove it, hit send, it takes 131 milliseconds. So it definitely didn't take 10 seconds, which means that it didn't interpret this as SQL code, which means that it's likely either that we used the incorrect syntax or this is not the database that we're dealing with. So let's just put an X sign beside this one. So maybe it's not a MySQL database. Let's try a different database. So let's try PostgreSQL next. And again, we got to format it correctly so that it doesn't break the backend query. Let's copy that. Put it into Burp. Control U to URL encode it. Hit send. And it looks like it still doesn't sleep 10 seconds. However, I'm noticing right now that we did something incorrectly over here. So what's happening is that the query is likely something similar to this. So select tracking ID from tracking table where tracking ID is equal to this tracking ID over here. So in order to properly inject our SQL payload into this, what we're doing is we're closing off the single quote over here, and then we're adding our payload. Now, the problem with this is that we still have a single quote that is unclosed, and then we've got the semicolon. So what we need to do is comment out the rest of the query, and this way this ends up being a valid query. So we did that incorrectly over here, and that might be the reason it didn't work. So let's try that out. So control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we get the request almost immediately. And so this is still an X. It's not a MySQL database. Now let's try with PostgreSQL. Again, don't forget to comment out the rest of the query. Control U to URL encode it. Hit send. And here we go. So we can definitely see there's a delay in the response and it should be a 10 second delay. So this is definitely vulnerable to a blind based SQL injection. The 260 milliseconds is the original request, and then the 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds, is the delay that we cause in our SQL payload. So this is definitely vulnerable to SQL injection. And if we go back to the exercise, it should tell us that we've solved the lab. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. Okay, so we successfully exploited a time-based blind SQL injection by manually doing it using Burp. Now let's try and script it. So as usual, the first thing that we're going to do is import the sys library. Next, we'll import requests. URL lib3 and URL lib because we'll use those in our script. And then we need to call the main method. and implement our main method over here. So the way I want my script to run is I'm going to say script.py, so the name of the script, and then I give it the URL. And then what it's going to do is it's going to try and inject a 10 second delay, and then it'll check the response time. If the response time is bigger than 10 seconds, then we've successfully exploited the SQL injection. If the response time is less than 10 seconds, that means we failed to exploit the SQL injection. So over here, we're first going to check if we gave it the correct number of arguments. 
so not equal to 2, which is the name of the program and then the URL that we want to exploit. Next, we're going to print the usage instructions. So sys.argv, 0, which is the name of the program. Next, we'll print an example of the usage instructions. Again, name of the program, and then let's say the URL is www.example.com. And again, name of the program. Okay, next, because we ran the program incorrectly, we're going to exit it. All right, so that's if you ran the program incorrectly. If you did run it correctly, I want to save the URL in the parameter called URL. So that would be the first argument that you give to the program. And then I want to print checking if tracking cookie is vulnerable to time-based blind SQL injection. And then I'm going to call a function called blind SQLI check URL. And what this function does is it tries to exploit the time-based blind SQL injection. And if it's successful, it'll report that the exploitation was successful. If it's not successful, it'll exploit that the exploitation was not successful. So let's implement that function. Again, it takes in the URL. We'll first set our SQL payload parameter. So that would be the one over here. Let's copy that, put it in here. Next, we need to URL encode it. So let's say SQL payload encoded is equal to URL lib dot parse dot quote. And then the SQLI payload. Okay, that looks good. And I don't know why it added that. We don't actually need it. Here we go. Okay, then let's set the cookies for the request. So we can get those from the burp request. So you could see that over here, we've got two cookies, the tracking ID, which is this one over here. Let's copy that. And then we also have another cookie called the session cookie. And it's this one over here. Now, in order to exploit the time-based blind SQL injection, we need to inject our payload in the tracking ID. And so we're going to add it over here. SQLI payload encoded. And here we go. So these are the cookies that we need. Next, we need to make the request. So it's a get request. And the reason I say get is because you could see it over here. It uses the get method and then it takes in the URL. Cookies to be equal to cookies. Verify to be equal to false because we don't want to verify certificates. And proxies to be equal to proxies. And that's something I forgot to do at the beginning. So I always configure my scripts to go through burp just in case I need to debug my script. And I forgot to add that over here. So let's say proxies is equal to HTTP, HTTP 127.0.0.1.8080. And we'll do the same thing for HTTPS. Okay, so now when we make this get request, it passes through burp first and then it gets sent 
to the application and then the response passes through burp first and then gets sent to my script. And this allows me to debug my script in case uh, something goes wrong and I don't know why it's not working the way it's intended. All right, so we made the request. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to check if the time of the response, so we'll say total seconds, is bigger than 10. Now we do have to convert this to integer. Let's say that. So if the response time is bigger than 10 seconds, then I wanna print. that it's vulnerable to blind based SQL injection. However, if the response time is less than 10 seconds, then I wanna print not vulnerable to blind based SQL injection. Okay, so this is a relatively simple script because the, all the exercise asks us to do is to prove that it's vulnerable or to prove that it's not vulnerable. We don't actually have to extract any information from the database, which is something that we'll do in the next lab. So our script is relatively simple. So let's save that. Okay, so before we run it, we very likely timed out of this session. So let's test that out over here. And it is taking time, which means that it did time out. So I'm going to close it, make sure that the proxy is turned off, it is, and just open up a new instance of the lab. Because it is a new instance, the cookies changed, so I'm going to use my cookie editor in order to copy the session. I'll also use it to copy the tracking ID. Let's copy that and put it in our script. Next, let's save the script and run it. So terminal, new terminal, clear that and make this a little bit smaller. Here we go. So hopefully we don't have any errors. Let's run Python 3 SQLI lab 13.py and then the URL of the program. So let's copy that, paste it, and hit enter. So we're still getting an, a warning, which we shouldn't because we disabled warnings over here. And we actually forgot to do that. Okay, so our script works because it did say it's vulnerable to blind based SQL injection, but we forgot to disable warnings and that makes the output look not too pretty. So let's do that over here. URL lib3 dot exceptions dot insecure request warning and there's no curly brackets. So let's save that, clear it and run it one more time. So now you shouldn't see any warning text and we don't. So it's taking some time because if it is vulnerable to a blind based SQL injection, then it'll take 10 seconds to run. And here we go. It says it's vulnerable to blind based SQL injection. Okay, to recap, we first manually exploited a blind based SQL injection by causing a time delay in the application. And then we scripted it in Python. In the next lab, we'll take this a step further and use this time-based SQL injection in order to output the password of the administrator. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that it reaches a wider audience. Also comment below what you learned and what you would like to see more of in the future. Thank you and see you in the next video.